Hey everybody, it's Lee Daniel again. And since I had some good feedback yesterday, I wanted to talk about the way that I think that you should go about getting a divorce. Now, you may know or may not know that there's two ways, there's contested and there's uncontested. And if you can possibly do it on an uncontested basis, then you're gonna save so much money and you're gonna save a lot of time, and you're also gonna have a lot more control in what happens in your case. But it may not immediately be uncontested because there may be things to hash out and we can still mediate it and we can still settle it. But the way that I suggest, when people come to me and say, how do I even go about this? How do I start this process? I suggest that they have a conversation with their spouse. You may be thinking, we don't communicate well. That's why we're getting divorced. I hear, I've heard that, and I understand that. But they probably know, most of the time, like I said yesterday, that your spouse is going to know things are not great in your marriage. They're going to know there's problems. And so having a conversation about that you, you want to get divorced, that you're not happy anymore, that you find you know you don't, it's not working out, try to have that conversation in the calmest, least threatening. And when I say threatening, like I'm gonna take the kids, I'm gonna take all your money, let's not do that. That's a bad idea to start from that place. Or by, if you leave me, I'm gonna make sure you don't have a dime. I'm gonna make sure you never see your kids. These are not good things to start with. And maybe you're just angry because you don't, you don't understand why it's so difficult to get this this them to understand that you start hurling things that you don't really mean but what i'm going to tell you is that when you start that way then it does not bode well for a peaceful and inexpensive divorce and i don't want you to spend a lot of money on divorce i mean you may think oh we got a lawyer suit but no no i want you to have the most peaceful divorce that you can have if we have to go to court and fight it out, we will do that. But I'm thinking about the difficulty that it is to go through the, the process, how frustrating it is, court date after court date, then being the stress of being in front of the trial, the money that it costs. You got to think about the economics. You got to think about also the stress that it puts on you before you wanna go down that road. Sometimes people say, I wanna get this much money, and I say, you're gonna spend that much to get that. So let's be clear about what we're really trying to get, and is it worth going down that road? Because I can tell you that nobody enjoys that process. It's not good. But if you have to do it, of course you have to do it, and sometimes you have to file contested just to get over the hump, and then we can start negotiating. But, so back to what you say, be nice if possible. <laughs> you know, don't start off in a place of um, anger and hostility. And if it takes some self-talk and or talking it to about it to a therapist or a family member, practicing what you're gonna say, your best friend, tell them, you know, this is what I wanna say. If you can't say it, write it. I know it's really old school, but, and I know they may get mad, they told me they wanted a divorce and an email or this or that, you know, or a letter. Well, if you really can't communicate with them face to face, that you're gonna have to tell them some way. It's far better to do that than have some unsuspecting person served with papers. That's not good. Or for them to come home and all your things are gone. Now, there are circumstances where that's the right thing because you're afraid of domestic violence or you're afraid something's going to happen. But the best thing to do is to have a calm, rational conversation. And if you can't accomplish it all at one time, then walk away before it gets heated and, and just resolve to come back to it. Because you also, especially if you have children, you don't want them to be in the middle of you arguing or to feel the stress and trauma in the household. And just so you know, you probably will have to live with each other during the pendency of the divorce, which means during the course of the divorce, you're probably going to have to live together. So 
do your best to think about how it's going to be living with that person when you start this conversation that hopefully won't start in a contentious way. And also blaming. So no threatening, <laughs> not a good idea to threaten. And also blaming is not a good idea. And maybe you do think that this whole thing is their fault. It's their fault that the marriage hasn't worked out because they've done so many bad things. They're a bad person, whatever. It doesn't help. It doesn't help us to get to that next place to blame. Because you might feel that in your heart and you may want to tell them that. And there might be a time and place for that. But if you want to have a divorce that goes easily, my suggestion is not to start with blaming. Try to be, and I know this is so much easier for me to say, try to take the emotion um, out of telling them. If, if you want to make this a peaceful divorce, that emotion certainly has its place. And I don't want you to think that you should stuff it down and, and not it feel and not express your emotion. But when we're in this place of trying to work out the terms of a divorce initially, Sometimes the best thing to do is to try to come into it thinking of the best way. Think of the end result. What do you want? How do you want it to go? Visualize it going easily and well. Because when you start bringing in blaming and anger and judgment and threats, you're more likely to be stirring the pot and it's going to cost you more in the long run. Talk to your therapist, talk to your friends, talk to your family, share with them the angst you're feeling. And another, well, you know, I'll, I'll save that for another day, but this is just if you want the divorce, right? And if the other party is upset, of course they're gonna be upset. And try to be understanding and give them a little space around it. I, I once had a case where the parties have been married over 20 years and suddenly the husband is saying, sign this divorce papers in two weeks. And I was like, you know, I think, the, I mean, I honestly think the marriage was like 40 years. It was such a long-term marriage. And he wanted it from the time he told her to the time he wanted it signed was like two weeks. She was a nervous wreck. Think about the other party when you're going through this because you, you can do that, right? Unless you're a narcissist and if so, then, well, you know, you need a whole nother video series. But you can think about how is this going to come across to this other person, right? How are they going to feel and try to be kind and give them space. And also know that by doing that, you're going to get in a better place for yourself as well and for your children. Because you want to minimize trauma on them. You want to make sure that your kids don't feel the brunt of all the tension and anxiety that the two of you are going through. I know, like I said, so much easier for me to say it. I remember that song back from many, many years ago. 50 ways to leave your, leave your lover. I don't suggest any of those. <laughs> I don't, those are not good. I've seen people go through this process in ways that are definitely not productive. Taking the kids and leaving, don't do that. <laughs> you know, if there's domestic violence, again, there's another whole way we may approach this. But if you're just wanting a divorce, taking the kids and saying, I want a divorce. And that, first of all, just makes the other person feel afraid, right? Or taking their money makes them feel fearful. When people are afraid, they're going to lash out. Fear causes people to, to act in ways that they don't normally act. And I know your high emotion does too. So it's so easy for me to say this, but I'm also speaking from many years of experience. And I know that ultimately what you want is for your divorce to go as easily, as peacefully, as inexpensively as you possibly can do it, right? So have a good day. I hope this helps. And I will be back with more good advice later.